Hello guys, welcome to Tutorial Wars. Uh, my name is Minhaj and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple HTML CSS website. Um, I'm going to give you a small demo as to how the site is going to look. So this is basically what you're looking at. So we've got a nice navbar, simple navbar with home, about, services and contact, uh, nice wallpaper and um, navbar, basically a smooth scroll effect. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Services section, a simple contact form, and a photo with your logo. And um, we'll get started. So, first of all, what I like to do is open up my Visual Studio. So, inside my Visual Studio, I would uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a head tag. And inside that head tag, my title tag and my meta tags are going to go. So, the first thing is title. We're going to call it HTML and CSS. And then I'm going to call my meta tag, meta name, called the viewport. Viewport and uh, content is going to be width equals to device. Width and initial scale. Initial scale is going to be equal to one, and then our maximum scale will be equal to one as well. And uh, user scalable, we'll put it to no. The next meta tag, oh, not menu. The next meta tag is going to be HTTP equivalent. And we're going to go X. Compatible. Content. Going to be IE equals to edge slash chrome equals to one. And then another meta tag. Oh, no, not meta. Yep, meta tag. We're going to call this hand. Held friendly content equals to true. All right, and then we're gonna get out of our meta head tag and uh, open up a body tag. So, guys, remember whenever you open up a tag, just make sure that you close it right away so that you don't forget to close it at the very end because sometimes when you're so concentrated you uh, the chances are that you might make a mistake of not closing it and what happens is then later on it's really hard to find which one you should be you should have closed so <clears throat> excuse me now i'm going to make a nav basically a nav bar and inside the nav bar we're going to create a in uh, a checkbox which will have an ID nav check then inside the nav div inside the nav div we're going to create another div class which we're going to call the nav header and inside that nav header we're going to have another div class which is going to be nav title and we're going to give this a title called tutorial worse I want to name it tutorial worse when you guys can name whatever you like Okay, and we're going to get out of the div. 
We're going to stay inside the nav div. We're going to get out of the nav header and the nav title. And we're going to create another div. Of the nav button. And uh, inside that, we're going to create a label for nav check. And inside this, we're going to have span. And we're going to put three spans in there. All right. And then we're going to create another div class, which is going to be nav links. So this is going to be your home and about and all the buttons for the navigation to scroll through the page. We're going to create a tag, which is going to be called home. And we're going to name it home. And I'm just going to copy paste it four times. And uh, I'm just going to change the names here. So we're going to have about, about services, oh my wrong, your yeah, services. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is a little raspy. Contact. Okay, so right now we have the navbar set up. We're just going to save it and see how it looks so far. So we got the tutorial words title, the home about services and contact. We're going to get into the CSS later. I'm just going to fill out the script first, or the HTML script, and then we'll move on to the next step. So now we're going to create the welcome page. And it's going to be this class and call it welcome. And we're going to give it an ID home. And we're just going to leave this one like that. And I'm going to create another div class called the about section. And the ID is going to be about. Okay, so inside this about, we're going to create a div class called main. And inside this main, basically, about section is a box. And inside that box, there's another box called main, which is going to have the, the content. And I'm going to give a h1 tag and which will be called about me. And I'm going to put an underline underneath it. So like it separates the header, like the head, of the section from the rest of the body. And then we're going to have a P tag. And I'm just going to add a bunch of gibberish in there. You guys can change it to however you like it. Uh, but I'm just going to write down just a small paragraph to show, OK, this is the context. You can just add whatever you like. And uh, the P tag, you have the divs close. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, this div right here is for the main. That's one box, like one box that is going to have an informa uh, information paragraph about yourself. And then we're going to create another div inside the about section, which is basically going to be the scale box where you show like a small box which shows that your web development skills, like for example, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Photoshop, or whatever. I'm just going to fill it up, um, but you guys can change it accordingly. So we're going to call this a skill box. And inside this box, I'm going to give a h1 tag. And I'm going to call it skills. And just like the previous one, I'm going to give a underline. And uh, now I'm going to create an 
Okay, let's move up here. UL. UL stands for unordered list. So I'm going to create a unordered list called progress. And inside the progress, I'm going to create li the list tag, which is going to be, and then I'm going to add a paragraph tag, which is going to be a class. I mean, I'm going to call it progress more HTML. And I have an H4 tag, and we're going to put it to HTML, let's say 80%. Okay, and uh, what I'll do is I'll just copy this, paste it. So I need what? I'll just make four progress bars for now. And I'm going to change this one. Oh, come on, come change this one to CSS. Change this one to JavaScript. And this one to, let's say, Photoshop. And we're going to change these classes name accordingly CSS and then JavaScript. And then Photoshop. Okay. All right. So now we've got that covered. So let's just see how it looks so far. So we've got the About Me section and uh, your skill section. So basically, we're going to display these the About Me and the skills right next to each other. But we, uh, that is going to be done through the CSS. So now we're going to move out of the About section because it is complete. We're going to get to the Services section, which is div class calls Services section. Give it an ID called Services. And inside that thing, we're going to create another div, basically a div class, just like the About Me section. And we're going to call it uh, main. And inside that main, I'm going to create an h1 tag with called services. And add an hr tag, like underline it. And then after the hr tag, you know what? I'm just going to copy paste this whole paragraph tag. Just like that. OK. Then we're going to create another div. Let's move back here. Class called <clears throat> row. Basically, this is going to be the, the services section, the type of services that you can provide to your customers. Inside that div, inside the row div, we're going to create another class called column. And in here, we're going to create another class called, let's say I would call it content. Right, so inside that content, I'm going to bring in an image tag, and I'm just going to use a uh, one of the images that I have, so I'm going to be, let's say, design, and uh, I'm going to give it some inline styling, and I'm going to put the width to 100%. And then I'm going to create, yeah, we're going to create another column with content. So right here, and I'm going to change this to design develop, for example. Same case with the width again. 
Number one, deliver maintain, right? And uh, I'm just going to create some spaces between the devs so that I can understand what is going on. Also, for each of these, I'm going to add a title underneath. So we're going to go to web design. And uh, then I'm going to call it this one, we call it develop. We're going to call this one deliver. And uh, I'm going to call this one. Maintenance. I don't know. If, yeah, I think it's correct. All right. <clears throat> Got that div. Got this div right here. Where's the? Okay. So now I'm gonna close these divs. Okay, so we've got the image tags. We created our basically created our services section. So we've got the header, the paragraph, a little about how what what kind of services you provide. Then we've got our row and the column, and inside that column we have content. So <clears throat> each of these con like. Those small boxes are going to have an image to basically design, develop, deliver, and maintain. So you just got to make sure uh, that your links are correct. And we did a little bit of in style, uh, inline styling. And um, so this is our services section. And we're going to see how this looks so far. So let's go ahead and refresh our browser. So we've got the um, home page um, where you the welcome is above the about me so there's a, like the picture of the the display picture is going to go but we've got the about me section with the scale section and then we have the services with these images with design develop deliver and maintain so moving back to the code we're going to add our contact section now. <clears throat> so we're going to create a div, basically a div class. And we're going to call, call it contact section. And we're going to give it an ID called contact. And inside that contact, we're going to create another div class called the main class, and inside there, we're going to create a H1 tag and we're going to call it contact, just like the previous ones again, an HR tag. Okay, and inside, we're going to create. Oops. 
form ID called contact form. Now we're going to give it method post action. We're going to leave the action empty for now. We're going to give it an inline style. Uh, we're going to call text align center. So we want the content to be at the center of the page. And then we'll add some padding. Oops. Padding top. It's 20 pixel. Oops, my bad. 20 pixels. Not padding, padding. Okay, so inside this, I'm going to create input, input name, call name, type is going to be text class, and then class called on control a placeholder I would say your name All right, let's see how it looks so far. I just wanna okay, see, see if this is your name. That is the placeholder. <laughs> Excuse me. And then we're gonna get out of there and so input name, we got the <clears throat> Type email class form control and the placeholder is going to be your email and required. Then we're going to go text area. Call this a message. Take this stuff off. Call class form control placeholder. Your message. Then we're going to create a submit button. Input type submit class form control value equals to and message. So that's our contact form, and uh, let's see how that looks so far. So you got the your name, your email, your message, and send button. We're gonna fix that, like the layout and everything, how it, the decoration basically. We're gonna do it in a second, and then we're gonna move on to the footer section. So I'm gonna go footer, and inside that footer, I'm gonna create dev class called footer section and inside that footer section I'm going to create another dev class called <coughs> footer content oops footer content okay so I'm 
going to add mid source website logo. I'm going to do some inline styling. Put it to seven pixels and height equals to seven pixels as well. Then we're going to create another div. Oops, not this. Another div class called, uh, let me call it. Foot. And inside there, we're just going to put 2019. Active. Class. Foot. The syntax for that, I believe, is uh, it's not that, it's uh, I think it's copy. Yep, copy. I'm gonna go all right. Reserve. You can add whatever you like. I'm just gonna add that and let's see how the photo looks. So you got the logo here, the 2019 all right reserves, uh, tutorial words. All right. <clears throat> so now, this is what you've got so far. So now the, the detail work starts now. So we're gonna start adding the CSS to it. Okay, so first things first, guys, uh, we're gonna declare the margin and padding for the whole, uh, all of the web page. We're gonna go margin zero. We're gonna go padding zero, and uh, box not box shadow, box sizing, which is going to be a border box. And uh, we're gonna get to the about section, contact section, and the services section. And we're going to put a background color of, you just put any color you like. I'm just making, uh, creating this page according to what I kind of like. So for the HTML body, like the whole script, we want a standard font family. And for that, we're going to go uh, this one right here. And we're gonna go width 100%, height 100%, and uh, so now we're gonna start uh, adding CSS to our navbar. I'm just gonna copy this. And I'm gonna go height. I'm gonna put it to 50 pixels. I'm gonna go width 100%. Background color. I'm gonna go post weight. Position is gonna be relative. Then we are gonna go to the Basically, I'm going to address this part right here, the nav header, which is inside this nav class. So the way to address or refer to that is you go dot nav, which is the main box, and then you want to address or basically refer to the box that is inside, which is the nav header. I'm going to go to the display, and I'm going to change it to inline. 
end line is basically in a line. So it's pretty self-explanatory. So now I'm gonna go again, dot nav, dot nav header, and we're gonna address what's inside the nav header, the nav title. So we're gonna take this, copy that, and the nav title, which was the tutorial verse. So we're gonna display that inline block. We're gonna make the font to about 22 pixel. Let's see. Let's see how that looks, and if needed, we'll change it accordingly. And uh, oh, color, sky blue, padding. So padding is gonna be 10 pixel, 10 pixel, 10 pixel, 10 pixel. So basically, starts from top right, bottom, left. So so from every side, the padding is going to be 10 pixel. Now I'm going <clears> to <throat> address the nav button, nav btn, oh, my bad, nav dot btn, and we're just going to go display none. For the nav dot nav links. So now I'm addressing the links, basically home, about, and all that stuff. So I'm just gonna go display inline, and I'm gonna float this to right, and I'm gonna go font size about 18 pixels. I would say should be okay with 18 pixels. And then I'm gonna go dot nav dot nav links and the a tag, basically all the all the links. So the button like the the text. So we're gonna go display inline block padding go 13 pixel 10 pixel 13 pixel 10 pixel we're gonna go text decoration none so basically text decoration is uh, so every single um, link that you had up there the home the about all that so this one see the underline and everything it, it when you go text decoration none it's gonna get removed so it's gonna look a lot nicer so I'm gonna show you in a second let me just add a few more lines of code dot nav links so upon hover so once the cursor goes to Cursor goes to any of the links. I'm just gonna, it's gonna change its color. So I'm gonna go RGBA, I'm gonna go zero. Actually, here. Zero, zero, zero point three. Okay, and then the last thing that we're gonna need is nav check, which was uh, nav check was the checkbox right here. We're just gonna go display none. Okay, let's see how it looks so far. Oops, my bad. So we gotta I think I know what I did over here. So at the top of the page in the meta tag, I wanted to add the the style sheet reference, which was supposed to be added at the very beginning, but I completely forgot. So we're gonna go style.css. We save it. 
and now we're gonna see and see how it looks tutorial works and upon hover it changes the color like the, there's a shadow behind around the box so that's what i was talking about so now we're gonna <clears throat> get to the second part of it so we're gonna start doing the second part which is the welcome page i believe uh, let's see so it's up the nav bar right here yeah so we're gonna go to the welcome page welcome section basically the welcome task we're gonna try to play around with it so we're gonna go dot welcome We're going to go background position. And we're going to go center, center. Background image. And then the URL. Dot dot. And we're going to go where's website image. And we're going to go. I'm just going to put this one here for now. I'm going to go width 100%. Height. We're going to go 100 vertical height. Margin is going to be set to auto. So background, it's going to be repeat. Background repeat. We're going to go no repeat. So that it doesn't repeat the background. Uh, background size. I'm going to put it to cover. So let's see how that looks so far. Okay, so there we go. So background size is cover. Basically, it covers up the whole web page. And uh, background repeat is no repeat. So that basically the screen size is a lot. Uh, basically bigger than the actual uh, image so what it does is it just stretches out the image and displays it on the screen like it doesn't repeat the image to fill out the whole content of the screen, like the whole page of the screen okay so that is that was our welcome uh, section which was very simple uh, not a lot going on over there so we're gonna go to about section now and I'm gonna go position relative display is going to be flex justify content and we're going to go space around the line items which is going to be center flex wrap we're going to go wrap flex direction and then we're going to set it to row Max width, which is going to be 100%. And uh, height, which is going to be 400 pixels. I, because I don't have a lot of uh, content in the build section, so I'm not going to expand it a lot in terms of height. So it looks, um, it, it will look, it, it's going to look like everything is packed up, you know, like it's filled out. But if I have a lot of white space, it's not going to look good. So that's why I'll just keep it like that. So now we're going to address the about sections main class. We're going to put the width, oh, width to 40%. Margin again is going to be set to auto. Getting out of there, we're going to go about section, skill box. And skill box is basically, uh, let's see, what do we have in the skill box? Um, <clears throat> so we have the progress bar in there. Okay, so for the skill box, I'm just gonna put the margin auto for now and see how it's looking so far. Okay, so you see how it 
puts uh, both the items right next to each other. That's what I wanted. And now we're going to move on to the progress bar. So I'm going to access that using the hashtag sign followed by the name, the ID, which was progress. The first thing we're going to go is list style. Oh, list style. Just going to be none. Color is going to be black. Width, we're going to set it to 240 pixels. Margin top is going to be 50 pixels. Position will be relative. Line height, two M's. <clears throat> then I'm going to access the list inside the progress bar. And I'm going to put the alignment of the text to center. Margin bottom, we're going to set it to 50 pixels. And we're going to go height, 2 pixels. And we're going to go border radius set to 10 pixels. Getting out of there, now we're going to access the H4 tag inside the list element. So, basically, let me show you. So, uh, so far we've accessed the progress, and inside the progress we're going to access this list. We've done that too, and now we're going to access this H4 tag inside the list item. So, I've got that over here. <coughs> I'm going to add position to be relative. We're going to put the top 30 pixels. And um, now we're going to access the class called progress bar right here. This thing right here, progress bar. And I'm going to give it a height of 18 pixels. Margin to be one pixel from the top and two pixels from the right. Position to be absolute. And border radius. I'm going to put it to 20 pixels. So I. So let's see how that looks so far. Okay, so we've got that aligned in the center and then evenly spaced out. Now I'm going to move on to the HTML class, this one right here, and then this one, and this one, followed by that one at the last. So we're going to go HTML, which is we're going to set the width to 80%, and we're going to set the background color to 23C, 6B1, kind of like skyish blue color. Yeah, so we got that over here. So we're going to go to CSS, not the services, CSS. And we're going to set the width to 80% for that one too, because our skills for CSS and HTML are 80%. So we're going to set the progress bar width to be 80% too. And we're going to go background color, no, color to be 0, BB, 4B. Save that, see how that looks. Okay. <clears throat> then we're going to access JavaScript. Let me just make sure that I've spelled it right over there to JavaScript. Yeah, I'll just copy it just in case so that. And we're going to put the width to, I think, 60%. That's what we set it to. Just 
60%. Background color, and put it to BC. All right, okay. Then we're gonna go to Photoshop, Photoshop. Just make make sure that the spelling is correct. Yep, Photoshop looks okay. We're gonna set the width to seventy percent and back color. Um, water. Okay, Indian red. Yeah, let's see how that looks. Okay. So we've got that. So we've got, so now our about me section and the skill section is looking good so far. So, so far we've got the nav bar with the hover effect and everything. We've got the, our like display picture. We've got our about me section and the skill box with the, the progress bars and everything. Now we're gonna move on to the service section and we're gonna, basically align each of these images next to each other or in a, in a row form. And um, we're gonna resize the images and display them in like one container instead of these big images right here. All right, so let's move on there. Okay, so for the services section, we're gonna access the service section class first. We're gonna give it a general layout. So we're gonna go position, which is going to be relative. Oops. Display is going to be flex. Justify content. We're gonna go space around. Align items. We're gonna align the items at the center of the page. Flex wrap, which is gonna be wrap. And then the flex direction. is going to be row. <clears throat> Max width is going to be set at 100%. Okay, so we're going to now access the main class inside the services section. All right, and we're going to set the max width to 1000 pixels. Margin is going to be auto. And I'm going to keep a, like for the, for all the H1 tags that I have inside, for example, the services section, the contact section, um, basically the scales, the about me, I'm going to set a standard size for all of these uh, head, headings. So I'm going to go H1 and I'm going to put the font size to 50 pixels. Let's see if that changes any, let's see if that changes anything. Yeah, it's better. You see services aligned in the middle of the page. So we're gonna go. So now we, we are basically going to, so now we've got the service section covered. Now we're gonna get inside the row and align all of the content, which were basically these pictures. We're gonna make them into like smaller pictures and um, display them in a row. So let's get to it. So we've got the row. We want the margin to be auto. Row. Uh, column. So for the row and the column inside the row, for all, each and every one of them, we're gonna set the padding to be eight pixels from top, right, bottom, and left. And then we're gonna create basically like four columns that are gonna like float next to each other. So we're gonna go float, and I'm gonna go left. Let's see if that changes anything so far. No, not yet, so you'll see soon that the effects are gonna start to take place. And also, right now, the width of <clears throat> each column is a lot, so we're going to put it to 
let's say 25% see if that does it yeah there we go so seem to be in the middle and uh, we're gonna go so we're gonna basically clear the floats after after the row so we're gonna go dot row after content is gonna be left empty there we go we want the display to be in a table form we're gonna clear property clear both see if that does anything not yet so then we're gonna go content content we're gonna add some padding this is from top right top right bottom left I always forget but it goes clockwise that's how I remember it <clears throat> now we're gonna move on to the contact section <clears throat> sorry okay so what do we have in contact I think it's just the form yep okay we're gonna go contact section and the general layout of the contact section is going to be the same as the ones above them so we're going to go position relative display flex justify oops justify content space around align items enter flex wrap is going to be wrap flex direction is going to be row max width is going to set be set at 100 percent then we go to the main class inside the contact uh, contact row so max width is going to be set at thousand pixels margin is going to be set to auto and then contact section I'm gonna go H1 I'm gonna go text align center okay so this one is at the center all right so now we're gonna access the stuff that is inside the main class which was I believe the form control let's see uh, form control yeah so we're gonna go oops dark form Control, I believe that's how it's spelled. Yep. I'm going to go with 350 pixels, let's say. Background, I'm going to set it to transparent. Then I'm going to go border, none. I don't want any borders around the box of the contact form. I'm right, going to go outline, just going to be none as well. We're going to go border bottom. We're going to add some border at the bottom of the form, which is going to be solid gray. Let's see if that does anything so far. Okay. All right. And then we're going to go color black. Margin bottom. We're going to go 16 pixels about. And width is going to be set to 50%. All right, so you see how it's like line stacked basically on top of each other. So now we're going to go start accessing the inputs 
all of this the inputs of the form. So we're going to go input. We're going to set the height to about 45 pixels. See what that does. Okay. Then we're going to go form dot submit, which was the submit class. We're going to go background Okay, so the submit button has turned to the desired color. Border color is going to be transparent. We're going to put the color to white. The the text color. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and then we're going to set the font size to about 20 pixels. Our height is going to be 50 pixels. Let's see what that does. All right. And then we're going to put a margin from the top side for about 20 pixels and the width to 50% as well. If the width is going to be the but the width of the button is going to be the size of the form. All right. We've got the button sorted. So we're going to add a little power effect on the button like once the cursor is uh, Taken on the button, it's going to change its color. So we are going to go background color. I'm going to put it to crimson. And cursor, we're going to set it to pointer instead of a regular mouse. Like this, the, the mouse that you see, instead of that, we're going to have this one right here. All right, so got that sorted. Now we're going to move on. The footer section. So for the footer, we're going to add a padding from top for about 10 pixels. Let's see. So it moves down a little. I'm going to add a width of 100%. I'm going to add a height. Just going to be auto. Color is going to be okay. So the color for the text over here is kind of like gray, sh shade of gray, basically. And I'm going to add a background, which is going to be. Let's see how that turns out. Okay. All right. And now for the, <clears throat> we're going to access this footer content inside the footer section. Now footer content. And uh, we're going to align the text to the center. And um, yeah, so the text is going to be aligned at the center. The logo is going to be aligned at the center. So everything that you see on this corner of the screen is going to be brought to the center. So it kind of looks like a little decent, you know. So as I said, it's a very simple HTML CSS website. So basically for beginners. So we're just going to add the margin left, margin right to be auto. We're going to align the text to center. And we're going to put the font size to about 14 pixels. See how that looks so far. Alrighty, so we've got 
basically according to a web page we've got everything covered now what we want to do is um, we're going to move on to the media queries so the web page is basically uh, completely responsive so for that i'm going to show you how to make your website basically adjust its content according to whatever screen size or whatever device it's opened on um, So, so whenever you guys want to basically check if your website is responsive, best way to do is so you go on your web page, right click on it, go inspect. So right now, our website is is responsive. It's not that bad. But what if what would happen if I were to narrow down the, the screen size. You see how my nav bar is still squeezing, but I don't want it to. So let's see what happens if I squeeze it all the way. So see how it's squeezed into the, it just drops down to the screen right here. I don't want that. What I would like to do for the nav bar is turn into like a hamburger, which is like three dash lines. So upon clicking it, it, it opens up, it drops down the nav bar. Let's see what else is going on. So the about me, you see the content is not aligned. So there's a lot going on. It's not, not perfectly aligned. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play around with the media queries and we're gonna see how that plays out, All right? So I'm just gonna add a comment section here so that we know that the media queries are happening. Underneath this section. So to access or to write down the media queries, what you gotta do is you go at media, then you're gonna go max width 700 pixels, which means if the screen size is smaller than 700 pixels perform a certain set, set of actions and which is going to be so our nav our nav uh, which has a nav button inside you want that to display inline block the position for the nav button is going to be absolute uh, right is going to be zero pixels oh, zero pixels top is going to be zero pixels as well then we're going to get out of that and we're going to access the label so we're going to go nav which is inside nav button. I mean, the nav button is inside nav, and the label is inside the nav button. That part, we're going to display it in line block again, and then we're going to give it a width of 50 pixels, a height of 50 pixels as well and we're going to add a padding around it 13 pixels then we go nav again nav button then we're going to go label hover effect then nav And the ID nav check nav check unchecked access all the elements inside the nav button We're going to add a background color. 
or GBA zero 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 point three. Then we're going to go nav dot nav button label. We're going to access the span element display block width will be set to 25 pixels. Height will be approximately 10 pixels. And we're going to add a top border of 2 pixels, solid sky blue. All right. Then we're going to go to nav and the nav links. Inside the nav links, we're going to position it to be absolute. Display will be block width 200%. Background color, we'll set it to kind of grayish. Height zero pixels. And then we're going to add a transition. So basically, this is going to be so once clicked on that hamburger, it's going to slide down and open up the nav. And we're going to set it to 0 0.3 seconds. Ease in. Overflow Y. I'm going to set that property to hidden. We're going to add top 50 pixels, left 0 pixels. Then we're going to get out of there. I'm going to go again, nav, the nav links. And we're going to access the A tag. And we're going to display it as block. And we'll add the width of 100%. Our text would be aligned to the center. And then getting out of there, and go nav. Nav check. Checked. I'm going to add the height of zero pixels. Then we're going to go again inside the nav links. We're going to go nav, nav class. The nav check is basically this ID of the checkbox. So we're going to go. So we access the ID through the hashtag button. Nav check, checked, nav links, and calculate the height, 100 vertical height minus 50 pixels. That's the height, how long the thing's going to open up, like the sliding thing down. And we're going to go overflow Y. I'm going to set it to hidden. All right, so this is the media query for our navbar. Now we're going to move on to the media query of our body. So 
with basically the about section, service section, and all that stuff. So let's get out of this window for the 700 pixel. We're going to go again. I'm going to go add media screen and max width of 900 pixels. We're going to go column. Column was basically, let me tell you what it was. Column were the four pictures of the website or like the ser under the services section. We're just going to go adjust that. So we're going to put a width of 50%. And then we're gonna, what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna get out of this media screen. We're gonna go media screen again. Max width of 600 pixels. So anything smaller than 600 pixels, the content is gonna align itself in a nice way. Once I'm write, done writing this, I'll show you what it does. So we're gonna go display block. And we're gonna set the height auto for the about section. We're gonna go dot main h1. Oops, h1. And we're gonna font size it to 32 pixels. So all the headings are gonna become a little smaller. They were 50 pixels before, but now they're going to be a little smaller. Then we're going to go out section dot main. And we're going to put the width to 100%. We're going to go column. We'll set this width to 100% as well. Okay, um, I think that's it for the media queries. Just gonna go ahead and see how it plays out so far. So I'll go inspect. And uh, as you see, when we click on here, it drops down. This was the gray area, and the nav bar is aligned at the center. And we have our home about services contact. Now I can change the color of the nav bar. Actually, I'm going to change the color of nav bar. But for now, I'm just going to keep it like that because that is not really a huge deal. But the most important part is that my web page content should be aligned according to the screen. So you see about me right here is aligned with the corner of the screen, skills, services, the basically all the pictures are aligned, web design, developed, stacked on top of each other, my contact page, the name and everything. So the content is has been aligned. So now my website is fully, fully responsive. <coughs> Excuse me. So you see how, let me show you. So as soon as, if you look at this number right here, it says 773, that's the width right now of the screen. So as soon as it will hit 600, anything less than 600, the content's gonna start stacking on top of each other. You see that? At 600, it's stacked on top of each other. Everything is stacking like that. Yeah. So those are the media queries, which are very important if you wanna make your website responsive. So guys, that is it for the tutorial. So your website is all set and ready to go. 
so this is this was basically a very basic tutorial for people who want to get started with HTML and CSS. Uh, basically, this website will give you a background of how things work on in a on a web page that any website that you visit. So uh, I will put the code in on my GitHub and uh, I'll provide the source code, no problem. You guys can take it, do whatever you want with it. Enjoy it, use it, improve it, learn from it. Um, it's all free. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section with your question. Whatever it is, I'll be more than happy to answer you. And please, please do not forget to subscribe and support us. And uh, we'll be posting more content. Um, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, so the next videos are going to be a lot more detailed. We're going to bring in some Bootstrap too. We're going to bring in some JavaScripts too. So there, we'll add some animation, all kinds of funky stuff in the website. But for now, this is just pure HTML, CSS website. All right, so we will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.